name is Tom Richard. I'm uh, going to be facilitating this LDP today, along with my assistant instructor. Start for slap out. Please turn your cell phones off. Silence them. Otherwise, the donut rule goes into effect. Today's LDP is on the Army leader. Personal character, presence, and intellect. about the room or eating some candy, make sure you do it safely, All right. don't choke. Who are the medics in here? CLS? All right. Cool, we're good. All right. Environmental considerations, please use the recycling uh, either in the back of the room or outside in the hallway, I have blue bins out there. Um, Please recycle your paper, plastic, things like that. Uh, reduce your use recycle. <coughs> Today's references, ADRP 6-22, Army Leadership. <coughs> All right, so what is character? You can be trusted. Be trusted? Need a little bit of personality. It's who you are. That's good. Your personality, who you are. What all goes into that? Your actions. Actions. Values. Values. How you were raised. Okay. Good. Why is a bunch of senior leaders in this room? Why are we going to be talking about the army leader and character? Reinforcement. Okay, reinforcement. We're continuously learning and improving. Always learning and improving. Right? Ourselves, our team. Well, your, your character is a fluid part of your body. It's, it changes daily. That's who you are and how you handle situations. Yeah, that's Very good. I like that. <coughs> so, what is character? Person's moral, ethical. <coughs> Qualities helps determine what is right. Motivation to do what is appropriate. What are some of the things we as Army leaders take into consideration to form our character? Experience. Experiences. Schooling. Schooling. Rules. What kind of rules? Regulations. Regulations. <coughs> SOPs. SOPs. Guidance. Higher. 
guidance from higher, so our leaders, okay, everybody's got a leader, right? What else? Army values. Good, the Army values. Very first one. Army values, empathy, order ethos, and service ethos. Discipline. So we all know what the Army values are, right? <coughs> what are they? All right, that leadership, right? What else do you need? He's even got his computer up. He's, he's Google searching. Right? <laughs> Working. Yeah, yeah. Focusing on on the task at hand, right? All right, what is empathy? Genuine what does it mean to have concern. empathy? Genuine concern, care, Put yourself in somebody else's position. Big picture? What big picture? What big picture are you talking about? That's oh. a pretty general statement. Okay, well, this particular situation. What could that over be thinking of in this situation oh. instead of what you think they should be thinking of? How do you think they should be acting? What, is, what are they doing with the budget for that decision or that action? Did you put your relationship over your movie? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not, get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what are, what's the difference between warrior ethos and service ethos? You can talk to your neighbor if you don't know or you're too afraid to say it out to confirm with your partner. What's, or you have no idea. <laughs> Does it have to do with us? Sir Williams, is Google telling you anything? <laughs> I'm familiar with the Warriors ethos. What's it called? All right, we should all be familiar with the Warriors ethos, right? You maybe have a smart card on it. I saw somebody here from Sir Williams pulled it out. Service what is it? Warrior ethos. I'll always place the mission first. I'll never accept defeat. I'll never quit. I'll never leave a fallen comrade. Good. And the Warrior ethos is part of the overall soldier's creed. Kind of makes up that core foundation of Soldier's Creed. So the Army civilians also have an ethos, and that's where we come up with the service ethos. Every, every member of the Army team should abide by those that core values, right? So I'm an Army civilian, a member of the Army team. I am dedicated to the Army, our soldiers, and civilians. I will always support the mission. I will provide stability and continuity during war and peace. I support and defend the Constitution of the United States and consider it an honor to serve the nation and its army. I live the army values of loyalty, duty, respect, self service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I am an army civilian. Cool, right? <laughs> ah, jokes. <laughs> All right, how about discipline? So what's right? So what's right? The thing to action, the right action is uh, that you want to do. Okay. Completion of the mission. Completion of the mission? So let's pose the question another way. So why were we talking about discipline? Why do we as party leaders need to uh, state discipline within our mission or whatever? Way? Whatever task we have. You need to do for your support that uh, soldier be that. Okay. What you're doing when they learn to do. Exactly. The discipline, control one's own behavior according to the Army values, that mindset to obey and enforce good orderly practices in administrative, organizational training, and operational duties. And so that discipline, you know, do, they're doing the right thing. A self discipline.
cheered for it. Christ, they go, it just should be happy. It's not like I don't let it volunteer. When things got really bad, man, the prop call next to them would be the best. Not some draft team who's going to get them killed. Are you sick because they like me? Because I'm spending time to get to know my soldiers. I mean, come on. You've been with these guys for, what, two years? I've been there for six days. The captain is on, so what? Soldiers do that. I don't deserve a reprimand for it. Why do you want? What? What if you won? <laughs> Never put yourself in a position where you can take from these men. Hey, we've seen Band of Brothers. So, what are they talking about in that little video clip there? In relation to characters. Say that, okay, say that. He's, he's saying it's alright to gamble and the troops are going to Okay. Okay, so as a leader, as a senior leader, you're not supposed to be gambling with your soldiers. How is that? Tied into the character what we were just talking about with those values, the army values at the peak. It's kind of what well, it just has to do with right and wrong. Which, you know, if something's just flat out wrong, you shouldn't be doing Discipline? <clears throat> well, as leaders, too, though, we're setting the example. So, as opposed to him going and gambling with the troops, so we should be setting that example, have that discipline. What's the other side of the coin? What's the other argument that he's making? That the uh, you're trying to gain the trust of the soldiers. Like get to know the yeah, you He's been there six days, right? Trying to get get to know Joe before they go jump in into Europe. Get to know their character. So it's not always clear cut. And there's always two sides, right? The Army Leader, presence. What is presence? Go ahead and take a couple minutes, talk amongst your small groups. But what do you think presence as an Army Leader means? <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
dry champagne or something. Like a new sock and stuff later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to remove the dark dark chocolate, there's a Come up with that. We didn't make sure we didn't Somebody All right, so starting with this group up here, what is presence when we talk about the art leader? I think it's caring. Caring. Showing that you're there. Showing you that you're there. And then, well, walk the walk. Walk the walk, talk the talk. Look the part. Look the part. Good. All right, jump up to this. Group here, engaging. What else? What did you say, Rob? Say again? Like I said, having command presence to be, make sure you're being able to be seen and not hiding in the corner. Okay. Good. Anything you'd add? Ability to influence outside of the chain of command. Ability to influence outside of the chain of command. Leading by example? A lot of smart people. <laughs> traits all kind of rolled into one and putting it out there. Right. So the impression the leader makes, outward appearance, the demeanor, the attitude, the actions, the how he or she presents to subordinates. No, oh, military and professional very exactly in command presence, uh, professional image of authority. Okay. That's right out of the uh, ADRP. So yeah, you're getting all the. You all summarized it very well. All right. Put in your own words, really well said. In what areas can the leader's presence be enhanced? So, how, how can we as Army leaders enhance that presence? Kind of already talked, touched a little bit on it as we went around the room, right? What were some of those things? Engaging. Engaging. Engaging your subordinates, your peers. Lead from the front. Lead from the front. Good. Always physical fitness. Physical fitness. So we can enhance our presence with physical fitness. What other kind of fitness is, it, uh, fitness is there? Mind, mental, spiritual, kind of that holistic view of fitness, right? So not just being physically able to wear the uniform, but also the uh, mind body, right? What else? That was very good, Sarah Williams. In here or Google? I did look. Did look. Okay. Learn, learning from others. All right, learning from others. Good. Clear, so you, clear communication. So clear, clear communication. Clear communication. <laughs> 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 Love it, Charlie. Clear communication. All right, so we have military professional bearing. Fitness. Can I talk about that holistic view of fitness? Confidence. Resiliency. All right, so being the being the ball instead of the egg, being able to bounce back. Kind of sticking with the Band of Brothers theme. A lot of very good clips on leadership. Well, you're stuck, yeah. I probably heard that question a thousand times. I probably asked it a few times myself. There were long stretches where we didn't know where Lieutenant Dick was. He disappeared, walk on these walks for hours at a time. 
wouldn't have been so bad if he was just one of the guys in the company. But Lieutenant Dyke was supposed to be leaving the company. Captain Winters was the CEO we could all expect. Moose Heiliger probably would have done a good job, but before we got a chance to find out, he was accidentally shot by a sentry. Then came Norman Dyke. I want tight security around the company CP, Lieutenant Chang. That understood? All right. Dyke wasn't a bad leader because he made bad decisions. He was a bad leader because he made no decisions. Okay, now, Battalion S3, planning a move. So I will probably be called away regularly. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the formation you want us to go for? At present, as per usual, but I'll clarify that with you at a later time, Lieutenant Compton. Yes, sir. All right, I gotta make a call. Let's move it out. Dyke was a favor to somebody at division. He'd been sent down to E Company to get some combat experience. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. Something unpleasant he had to get through before he could continue his march up the ladder. So, what I want you to do is I want you to take a few minutes to talk amongst your group on something that stood out to you in that video clip about presence, talking about the Army leader and presence. Okay, so there's a lot to kind of pick from from that video clip about what we were talking about. I want you to talk amongst yourselves, and then we'll talk as a, as a group in about five minutes. Yeah, 
some of the examples that you came up with in your groups. When he was given a, a real question, he didn't have an answer. Good. So he caught that. Uh, one lieutenant asked, you know, well, what are we doing? Or what's, 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 what's the formation? Well, you know, I asked for the usual, what's the standard, um, but I'll uh, get back to you on that. It would be a great video to show the candidates of what not to use an officer. Good. <laughs> Yeah. What else? What else did you come up? Just yawning, you know. A like simple act of yawning. And then immediately walking away. And then say, so yeah, I gotta go make a phone call. Right. Uh, this group kind of talked a little bit about that too, right? Do you have anything else to add? I thought it interesting is just protecting his own ass. He wanted the CP security. Yeah, really tight security. Good. So you didn't care about the rest of the company. You just wanted the CP security. Good. Lieutenant. Good. You come up with something. That's what I was just going to say. Was it double security or on zone CP? So we got taken as that. Mm -hmm. For a couple of that, that's three. Making this call. Yeah, we can make this call. Good. So there's not only what he said, but how he presented himself in that video. There's a, there's a lot of body language as well as his verbal communication with his soldiers. And then he literally didn't have that command presence. He was in and then out. You know, in the beginning, the first sergeant was like, where's Dyke? You know, I've asked that a thousand times. Where, where is he? You know, so he's physically not even there. All right, we kind of talked a little bit about that uh, in the beginning about being, being where your Joes are at, being where your soldiers are at. If they're training downrange, don't be back at the talk 
do enough.